while we open our model, we'll now take into account the management of interferences, both statically and dynamically. Statically, later on, we shall use the specific check interfer interferences command under tools info. Dynamically, we shall now drag a component and ask the program whether to show the collision during its movement or not. First, let's open the System Options, Clipboard Drag and Drop tab. In the Collision detecton, Detection area, we can set the type of feedback for collisions to None. As you can see, with this option, we can drag the lever as we like according to its constraints and its semi-constrained movement is absolutely free from interferences, which are not detected. OK. If we now set the feedback to highlight colliding faces, as soon as we move the lever to interference zones, the involved faces are highlighted, as you will see. Though the movement across those zones is still possible. OK, you can see the involved faces. Again, if we set the feedback to stop on collision, you will see that the movement instead is inhibited in the interference zones. Take a look. Here, the lever cannot move because we are in interference, while it is obviously free to move in the other zones. Let's now set the feedback back to none. We shall now examine the Tools Info Check Interferences command. Before we go on, so Tools Check Interferences. Before we go on, let's add a further constraint and action angle to our level. In the model structure, let's open the mating node corresponding to our lever. Let's right click on coaxiality and let's choose redefine. The solid mating command starts. Under more option, more condition, let us select select axial angle. In order to make selection easier, let us zoom the involved area and let us slightly rotate the view. Let us select this edge of the lever and this edge of the frame. An axial angle is added to, it, to the coaxiality constraint. Let's select Show Driving Dimension in the Context menu. The dimension is displayed on the model. Double click on the dimension. In the expression box of the dimension dialog box, let's type in angle. The variable is defined in the spreadsheet and assigned to our, to our angle. Rebuild and then open the spreadsheet. In the expression box, let's type 198, that is a collision value. Rebuild and close. Let us adjust the visualization to better appreciate the effects. And now let us start the Tools Info Check Interferences command. After we have adjusted our object. So, check interferences. Let us select the brown and the green levers and click the Compute Interferences button. The Interferences Results dialog box is displayed. The display drop down list shows highlight. In the model, the two colliding levers are actually highlighted. Choose inter interference solid. Only the interference solid and the colliding uh, components are displayed. Same with the interference solid and fit, but the view is optimized. The panel in the dialog displays two possible orders by interferences, showing for each interference the involved entities, or by entities. For each entity, it shows all the entities colliding with it. Let us set the display to highlight back again and let's close the command.
Okay. Now let's start it again and take a look at the three buttons below the display drop down list. After we've performed our, our ordinary selection. Save interfer interference results, save the results of this check. Create interference solids, create the static solid of interference. Create visual bookmarks, create a visual bookmark of the evolved entities. Click the button and then OK to confirm the creation. In the model structure visual bookmarks panel, you'll see there's a visual bookmark with the original view and one for each interference detected by the command. If you click on the bookmark corresponding to our interference, only the involved solids will be displayed. Not now, uh, now let's show our whole model back again by clicking on the original view bookmark. Let's now restart the check interferences command, select the levers, click compute interferences, and let's actually create the interference solid by clicking the corresponding button. Finally, let's close the command. Let us rotate the visualization and enlarge the zone where the interference solid has been created with a zoom window. And now let us show it. First, let's select again the history tree panel in the model structure. Let's right click on the level 1 icon and select hide entities. Level 1 is hidden. Let's do the same with lever. And here is the interference solid. Now, if you click on its icon in the model structure, it will be highlighted, as you can see. Let's unhide lever 1 and lever by right-clicking on each of them and selecting Unhide Entities in the context menu. Now, let's take a look at the mating properties. On each mating, we can get info about the constraint type. We have seen that it is possible to redefine each single mating in a mating node. We can also see the mating properties. Let's right-click on the mating 15 icon and let's select mating properties in the context menu. The mating properties dialog box displays. It shows the numbers of constraints, the degrees of freedom, and the number of entities involved. And now we can create the visual bookmark uh, with the button below. If we create it and select the visual bookmark page, click on the corresponding item, all in the involved entities are displayed. Now, let us show the whole model back again and position it properly. In mating, we can use profiles or curves as reference objects, or profiles inside components as objects to be positioned. Let's then now insert a component containing just a simple profile, framework profile dot e3. So insert component x reference then let's specify the name and confirm. Let's start the solid mating command and select the vertical line OK, we have inserted the profile. Let's start the solid mating command. Let us select the vertical line on the right side of the profile as the object to be positioned. Then let us select the left back edge of the frame as the reference object. A coaxiality constraint is inserted between the lines of the two entities. With such a constraint, the line belonging to the profile can rotate around the edge of the frame. Now let us zoom the lower part of our assembly so as to see the bottom line of the profile we have positioned. Here we are zooming. Let's start the solid command again. And let us set a coincidence constraint between the bottom line of the profile and the back bottom edge of the frame component. Let's close the command then. 
Let us fit the view again and then rotate it. Here we are starting the rotation. Okay, we can see the model, the whole model. In order to position the yellow guide on the curve, let us open the mating 15 node in the model structure. Let us right click on the coincidence constraints on top and select delete in the context menu. The constraint is removed. Let us properly rotate the model and zoom it so as to be able to select the inferior face of the yellow guide. So, first we rotate. Here's the rotation. It's a slow motion. And now let us zoom so as to see the lower face of the yellow guide. In, let us start the solid mating command. Uh, in the type, select the face. In the type drop down list, let us set the constraint to parallelism. Let us now rotate the model so as to be able to select the top face of the frame, which we want with uh, with which we want the inferior face of the yellow guide to be kept parallel. Let us now select the top face of the frame. Let's close the command and fit the view again. Let's rotate the view so as to be able to see both the back bottom edge of the yellow guide and the top curve of the profile. We are rotating now. Okay, we can see both the back bottom edge and the curve and now we shall zoom the zone. As object to be positioned, let us select the midpoint of the back bottom edge of the yellow guide using tool to snap midpoint and let us set the constraint type to on curve. Finally, let us select the curve. Let us rotate the model so as to better see the yellow guide. its midpoint is on the curve and its lower face is parallel to the top face of the frame. In the spreadsheet let us set the angle value to zero. Rebuild and close. And now Eventually, let us fit the view and appreciate the yellow guide positioned on the curve.